the movie preview critic, informing and entertaining your movie world. The question isn't if Disaster Movie's gonna suck, it's how much syphilis ravage, gonorrhea, fire piss, leaking, herpy pussing, genital wart riddle, donkey d is this gonna suck with its leprosy crusted spewing mouth? Let's get our scalpels out, forget to turn on the anesthesia, and cause this movie at least as much pain as its preview has caused us. The preview opens in the same unimaginative cliche ways that all previous spoof movies of the last 10 years have. Get the movie preview voiceover guy sounding real dramatic and make the audience think this is a serious movie. And that sets up what's supposed to be the first laugh. Then there's this, big d***ed girls in bikinis. Now from a guy's point of view, I'm not complaining, but what does that have to do with anything related to disaster type movies? And here, a meteor falls on Hannah Montana. The results are in, and that's... And let's look at the cast of characters in this moment. Okay, you have Kim Kardashian, who took the Paris Hilton route to fame by accidentally releasing a sex tape. And based on that, there are really two reasons she's in this movie. Then there's Juno and these guys, who are probably from High School Musical. But again, none of these characters are related to anything from disaster-type films. Then there's this, The Hulk. Again, another superhero movie reference, not disaster-related. I have to admit, I did laugh the first time I saw this, but something tells me this will be one of the very few semi-giggle-worthy moments of this movie. Next up, Enchanted. Again, nothing to do with disaster movies. And the supposedly funny moment here is... Okay, so next up is... Really? Another superhero movie? That's still in theaters? It's time to do some movie math here. My brain plus watching the disaster movie preview equals... There are three major problems with this movie. First, there apparently is no disaster movie spoofing. Second, there isn't really any movie spoofing at all. All the jokes are related to major trailer moments. And third, it's not funny. Let's take a look at the first area. We've seen the images from the preview, so let's look at the poster. Apparently, this is going to be spoofing Iron Man, Hancock, Sex in the City, Indiana Jones, Hellboy, Amy Winehouse, Her Cat, Batman, Kung Fu Panda, The Chipmunks, and High School Musical. And from TV commercials and internet blog posts, it appears that I Am Legend, Cloverfield, Wanted, Jumper, You Don't Mess With Zohan, An Inconvenient Truth, 10,000 BC, There Will Be Blood, Super Bad, Speed Racer, The Love Guru, and Dr. Phil will also make appearances. Okay, let's take a moment here. Again, it's called Disaster Movie, and it parodies a total of one, two, three disaster-type film. Maybe when you research disaster-type movies, there just really aren't that many to spoof. Just for fun, let's do our own research and list a few titles. The 11th Hour, 12 Monkeys, 28 Days and Weeks Later, The Andromeda Strain, Aftershock, Earthquake in New York, Airport, Airport 1975, Airport 77, Concord, Airport 79, Alive, Apollo 13, Armageddon, Asteroid, Atomic Train, Avalanche, The Black Hole, Blackout, By Dawn's Early Light, The Cassandra Crossing, Category 6, Day of Destruction, Category 7, The End of the World, Chain Reaction, Children of Men, The China Syndrome, Class of Newcomb High, City on Fire, Crack in the World, Dante's Peak, The Day the Earth Caught Fire, Daylight, The Day of Roses, Deep Core, Deep Impact, Deluge, The Double at 4 O'Clock, Doomsday, Dragonhead, Earthquake, Evan Almighty, Failsafe, Fail Contact, Bird Flu in America, Firestorm, Five Comeback, Flood, Grey Lay Down, The Hades Factor, The Hindenburg, The Island at the Top of the World, In Old Chicago, Judgment Day, Juggernaut, Krakatoa, East of Java, Killer Buzz, aka Flying Virus, The Last War, The Last Man on Earth, The Last Days of Pompeii, The Last Wave, Magma, Volcanic Disaster, Maroon, Maximum Overdrive, Meteor, Miracle Mile, Night of the Twisters, Night of the Comet, Noah's Ark, No Highway in the Sky, On the Beat, Outbreak, Panic in the Streets, Panic in Year Zero, Peacemaker, The Perfect Storm, The Philadelphia Experiment, The Poseidon Adventure, Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, Roller Coaster, Runaway Train, Snakes on a Plane, San Francisco, Solar Attack, Space Camps, Special Bulletin, Storm Chasers, Revenge of the Twister, Sunshine, Supernova, Tidal Wave, The Taking of Felon, One Two Three, The Rings of Rancho Core, The Children, The Manhattan Project, The Day After Tomorrow, The Hurricane, The Day After, The Happening, The Satan Bug, The Terminator, Terminator Two Judgment Day, Threads, Titanic, 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 The Towering Inferno, Tornado Warning, Tornado, Turbulence, Twist, Vertical Limit, Virus, Volcano, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds, Warning Sign, Water World, When the Wind Blows, The World, The Flesh, The Devil, and When Worlds Collide. So there are obviously some great disaster movies that haven't been spoofed yet. So why does this movie have the right title but the wrong content? Well, most likely the filmmakers and the studio don't trust the memory of the audience to remember movies from more than 10 years ago. But when you look at this preview, it seems the filmmakers and studio don't even think the audience can remember movies from 10 months ago because they're spoofing movies from 10 minutes ago. Which brings us to the second area. These movies
movies aren't even on DVD yet. And more importantly, the genres they represent haven't had time to overstay their welcome. Film parodies work best when they spoof genres that have exploited their characteristics to the point of unaware self-parody. The Stallone Schwarzenegger action movies of the 80s and 90s. The slasher horror of the 1980s. When we first discover these movies, they're great, fresh, new, revolutionary, and entertaining. With each new film that's inspired by the original, the challenge to take the audience someplace new increases. In action movies, the villains get more outrageous. The explosions are bigger. In horror movies, the body count increases. And with each serious presentation, the audience gets less of a high. It becomes more and more familiar until we're totally adapted to the substance and style, able to predict the story, characters, and set pieces, and eventually, we lose interest and become bored. And as a result, the box office numbers dwindle, and the genre slowly dies out. That's when it's parody time. The spoof is the final stage of any genre. But here, H would wants to make as much money as soon as possible, so they're trying to sell us a fruit that hasn't even ripened yet. A spoof works when it examines the soul of the movies it's parodying. It has to stay true to the spirit of the original work and just exaggerate it. The spoof-worthy element of Juno wasn't the baby. It was the hipster, I talk like I'm an adult and was born in the 80s attitude. In Sex and the City, how about spoofing their obsession with materialism and relationships? In Iron Man, how about spoofing the notion that a billionaire who wants to stop being responsible for weapons of mass destruction creates the ultimate weapon of mass destruction to solve the problem. Here, Disaster Movie is more theater of the absurd than parody. Researching the movie's posters, I came across this, the Spanish language version. Guess what it's called? Superheroes a Liga de Injustica, which translates to something like Superheroes the League of Injustice. That actually makes more sense. This movie's spoofing superheroes mainly, so why not stop bullshit? American audiences by selling this as a disaster movie spoof. Oh, because Superhero Movie just came out a few months ago, and more than likely the H. Wood marketing teams think American audiences wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two. They'd think it was the same movie. So why don't they just call it Lazy Fill in the Blank Pop Culture Reference Movie? Basically, all you have to do is watch TV for about a week to figure out who's hot in the news, then look back at the last three months of movie releases, watch the trailers, throw it all in a blender, and see what random jokes come together. Before, you actually had to put some effort into creating a story and jokes related to the genre you were spoofing. Here, the only consistent theme is pop culture. This leads to the ultimate problem here. Number three, it's not funny, which is the responsibility of the filmmakers. Are these guys funny? Well, their past films have had funny moments, so they're not completely without comedic sensibilities, but they're definitely not the funniest guys in the room. In Hollywood, there's a saying, you're only as good as your last movie. Well, their last movie was Meet the Spartans. Before that, it was Epic movie. And before that, it was date movie. If this were baseball, that would be three strikes. So how come they're not out, on the bench, or spending some time in the minors getting back into form? Probably because somehow, some way, there are three strikes, there are three cinematic paper bag <laughs> bombs that they've left on the screen of our movie theaters to be lit on fire by the magic light of the movie projector, and then have blown their peanut corn stanky content on our naive faces have actually made money. While the movie quality is getting here <laughs> for some reason, Reason, the box office profits are getting higher. Is it true that all a studio needs to do to make money on a movie is appeal to the lowest common denominator? There's nothing wrong with <laughs> fart jokes, but when that's all that there is, aren't we missing something more? Where's the spirit, the soul, the depth of the movies? A spoof is a call for a genre makeover, a rejuvenation. Instead, disaster movie is a foreboding sign of the movie world's degeneration. A degeneration that H. Wood isn't trying to hide anymore. Maybe it got its title because it knows what it is and what it's doing to the movie world, slowly destroying it. But who should we blame? The cynics in H. Wood who greenlight these cinematic abominations because they know they'll make money? Or us, the audience? Remember, Hollywood gives us more of what we pay for. In this movie democracy, your movie ticket is your vote. You cast your ballot for the movie future with every ticket you purchase. It's time to take responsibility for the bad movie polluted environment we've helped create. The movie preview critic rates disaster movie unworthy of big screen viewing. If you have to watch it, see it edited for TV, playing in the background as you do something more productive with your life. It's predictable and cliche. The filmmakers are not even trying with this total lack of imagination on every possible level. Here, you definitely know what you're getting. When you watch this preview, all you can think is, get the f*** out of here. Did the studios really think this is something audiences wanted to see? It's definitely sadomasochistic. Go to it, and you're a sadist. Sit through it, and you're a masochist. And finally, it's a clear, definite, undeniable sign of the approaching movie apocalypse. Now, it's time to find Disaster Movie's place in movie history. 
last. It's last. Of all the spoofs in movie history, this will be the worst one. And that's Disaster Movie's place in movie history. So until next time, you've been warned. Choose your movies wisely, and as always, Long live good movies.